carbon removal. So these last sliders and en roads really deal with a different type of action than all the other sliders and en roads. They're talking about how we can remove carbon from the atmosphere, while all the other sliders, they're addressing the emissions from all the different types of greenhouse gases that we have. And under this, these two sliders here, we have afforestation and then technological carbon removal. There's a whole variety of different things that are encompassed in that. So even before I move the slider, uh, let me help you understand what's included. So first, afforestation. What that is, is planting trees, planting forests in areas where there isn't forests already. So it's expanding the area of land used by forest. Then in technological carbon removal, we have several different types of actions uh, represented there. And you can see this if you click in the advanced view and scroll through. So the first one we include is called BECS, otherwise known as bioenergy carbon capture and storage. What this is, is burning biomass, producing bioenergy from that, and then capturing the carbon released and sticking it into underground permanently and then regrowing all of that biomass that was cut down to be burned previously. Then the next type of carbon removal is direct air capture. What this is, is a giant technological machine that basically sucks carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, turns it into a product that we can pump underground and store it permanently. Uh, then we also include enhanced mineralization. So there are certain types of rocks like basalt that if you crunch them up and spread them across land, they will do the work of sequestering carbon and storing it. And that, those rocks can get washed uh, into the deep ocean where they can be there, they can store the carbon permanently. And uh, then we have another method, agricultural soil carbon. This is talked a lot about in the um, land space where we're, we're really looking at how can we maintain healthy soils um, and still grow food. So this includes a whole bundle of different practices uh, to really make sure that the, uh, the soils across our agricultural lands are maintaining good carbon levels and able to store more and more carbon. So processes like no-till agriculture are included in here, regenerative agriculture, um, that kind of thing. And then lastly, the final type of, of carbon removal method that we have included within inroads is biochar. What this is, is taking biomass of some kind, wood or that kind of thing, turning it into charcoal through a process of pyrolysis, and then again, storing it underground so it's stored there permanently. Hopefully you got the um, consistent thread through all of this. What we're doing when we, when we really think about how carbon removal might be successful is that that carbon has to be put in a place where it's not gonna end up in the atmosphere uh, in, in our lifetimes very soon. If it does, then it's part of the carbon cycle and it's not, a, uh, it's, it's not part of that really important process of uh, adding to the carbon removal uh, to help um, balance out uh, climate change and all of our greenhouse gas emissions. Now it's important to note, and maybe you picked up on this as I was rattling through all of those different approaches. Some of these approaches you may have never heard of. That's because they don't exist. They're, they're not yet at scale, at really large scales. There's lots of experiments going on, lots of new businesses being started, but in many cases, they're still very, very expensive and not yet financially viable as something that would be able to really address and uh, balance out the emissions. So when you move these sliders, really that, that's an important thing to keep in mind is what is the scale? What am I assuming about the potential of these approaches to really make a big difference? And as we get into this, I'll show you some of the techniques where, where you can show your participants uh, what the scale even looks like and that kind of thing. But just to, just to show you where I will start oftentimes before I move the sliders for carbon removal, what I'll do is change the graph over here, uh, go into removals and land use, and then change the graph to sources of net carbon dioxide removals. And so what that does is that'll, sh that'll make us be able to see where those, um, uh, those removals are coming from. And then on the right here, I'm actually gonna change the grass graph over to this stacked graph, which is showing greenhouse gas net emissions by gas. 
And first, let's look at afforestation. So again, planting trails, trees at a massive scale. This just goes well beyond planting a tree in a backyard or some urban forestry projects, that kind of thing. This is many, 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 lots and lots of acres of land being dedicated to forests where they weren't before. If we scale this up, say I'm just gonna put it halfway, medium growth, you can see here on the right that all of a sudden uh, we can see where this, this afforestation is now appearing on the graph. And you can notice if I replay the change that our land use emissions now, um, which we see over here, they go down because they're being balanced out. So that the, the, the deforestation emissions that we have because we haven't taken any action on that slider um, are being balanced out by increased growth of trees in other places. Um, that doesn't mean that the deforestation has stopped. It's just that there's a lot of tree, tree growing happening in somewhere else. And then um, the other thing to note too is Let's see, let's replay that change. Did you see any change in temperature? Not in the degrees Celsius, we can see here in degrees Fahrenheit that it's changing from 6.5 to 6.4. It's making a very slight change. Even if I scale this up, maybe to its maximum extent, you can see it made only a 10th of a degree of a difference. And what's going on in part here is a couple things. One is that the scale um, in terms of the potential land we have and the potential for growing trees to really be able to uh, do much in terms of addressing all of the other emissions and all those sources, it's just not at the same scale. So even when we're doing the maximum amount that we think is feasible, um, it's still not enough to put a big dent in things. The other thing is it takes time for trees to grow. Um, you don't plant a tree and then expect it to be able to be as big as a giant sequoia overnight. This takes decades and decades for, for that carbon to be stored. Even when you have like plant fast growing trees like pine and that kind of thing and big plantations, that's not, not the way to go, but uh, that sometimes is what afforestation looks like. Even that doesn't really capture the large scales of carbon that would be needed. And you see here, um, that even with our scale up of afforestation, it's not peaking until the very end of the century. Um, trees take time to grow. And in addition to that, it takes time to secure the land, to grow the trees, it takes time to plant trees. All of those things need to be factored in. The other thing too to consider um, that, we, that we include within En-ROADS is, is also how much carbon trees can absorb. They, they absorb diff at different rates throughout their throughout their lifetime. So as a tree is growing really fast, it's sequestering lots and lots of carbon, but mature trees, they're not growing as fast and they're not sequestering carbon at the same rate. So that's factored in as well. Um, moving on over to the technological carbon removal side. If I move this slider just here on the main screen, uh, what you end up doing is, you, is we get action happening across all those different types of carbon removal that I listed off earlier. So we have at the top here on this graph on the right, I mean, excuse me, on this graph on the left, um, mineralization. Then we have direct air capture in pink, um, agricultural soil carboning, carbon appearing here in yellow, uh, in dark gray biochar and purple vex. So all of these together, just with my low growth scenario, um, then help to reduce emissions um, some. So here, I'll replay the change again. So we were at 3.5 degrees. Now we're at 3.4 with this additional action. And again, keep in mind, what would this even look like? What we are saying here is that this would include really optimistic scenarios in terms of the scale up and potential of all of these things that don't yet exist at really large scales. And you can see over on the right graph, that we now have this gray line, gray area appearing, that's that other CDR, other types of carbon dioxide removal, um, starting to, to pull emissions down uh, from the atmosphere. Um, so again, going back to and thinking about scale here, which, is, which I think is really important as we're thinking about carbon removal, um, is I'll switch over the graph here and we'll just look at, for example, the land for growing carbon dioxide removing biomass. So if we're talking about planting lots of trees, if we're talking about using things like BECS, um, bioenergy carbon capture and storage, biochar, 
we have to think about where is the land coming from for all this and what are we assuming there? And so you can change over to this graph here and see that with this massive scale up of tree planting happening all over, um, we have with the, the land that that would require is greater than the area of land that India has. That's what this dotted line is representing, the area of India and um, afforestation at the scale that we have put this slider at would be, you know, almost nearly double that, especially with the amount of land needed for then Bex and biochar. You might say that's not, not reasonable, uh, that's not practical, then scale it back and make sure to raise these considerations with your participants when they're suggesting them. And these are just different discussion topics that you can bring up. Um, and again, if, you, if you're ever wondering what, what, what all of these different things are, you can go in and read in the descriptions what, they, what, what exactly they are under technological carbon removal, scroll through the different settings here, and maybe you don't wanna try experimenting with all six types all at once, what you can do is you can say use detailed settings here and then turn them on uh, individually as you like and really examine uh, each one. And you can read, of course, the descriptions to really understand um, what the sliders are. I hope that's helpful um, as you're navigating inroads with groups and that kind of thing. I'll see you out there.